Hello, my name's SBJ and welcome to the October layout update. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. A lot has happened in the last month on the layout, so I'm going to try and cover as much of it as I possibly can. Uh, because the drop in temperature happened, it meant that I have had a lot of time to get up in the loft and do little bits and bobs. So the first thing that's probably worth mentioning is that the fiddle yard is now finished. If you haven't watched the video, you can watch it up here. Uh, I want to say a massive thank you to anyone who has watched that video because it is now the most watched video of my railway journey. So a massive thank you to anyone who has watched that video. Like a genuinely big thank you because it sort of done this weird blow up thing. So yeah. Uh, second of all, thank you to all of my new subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed, then please do so below. So apart from the fiddle yard being done, the other big thing on the layout is that it's been on a bit of a weight loss regime. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you won't have seen any of the updates on this. However, what I've done is on the two side bits of the layout, so I always consider it that the front of the layout, the main part of the layout is the station, then we have the what's on my left if I look at the station, so the old canal scene. Then we've got the right hand side, which is the uh, going out of the, off the island scene. Uh, and then we've got the fiddle yard would be behind me. So whenever I talk about left and right, that's what I'm referring to. See, the big thing that I've done is I've effectively removed one foot of the baseboards from those two side bits. Uh, if you watch the original videos, you'll know that most of the layout was a four by two foot board situation. And all I've done is I've kept those four foot in length boards, but I've trimmed off one foot of them. They just felt too big for what I needed in the loft. Um, where I took away all the points on one side, uh, I didn't feel I needed such a big bit of board. And on the other side, I knew that I'd eventually have to put a board behind the track from where the chimney breast is. So, I basically cut it all off. That's, that's the simple way. So, uh, I've trimmed it down and I personally think it looks better. The amount of space it feels like I've generated in the loft is insane. Simply by taking off just a foot on either side, the loft feels so much bigger. And I don't know if the videos will ever show that, but for me, being in the loft, it feels like a much nicer place to be. I always focus mostly on the station, uh, but I do love those other side bits, but I just felt like there was too much there. With that, what I have done on the left-hand side is I have removed the canal wall that was on that left side simply so it's a nicer view for me because what happened was I wasn't seeing the trains come in and out so well because there was a wall there and whilst to fit with the theme of trying to model the old canal in Portsmouth it just didn't work in the long run so I've taken that away uh, what I've also done on that left hand side is I have sorted out the back scene and made it so that there is a scenic break uh, where it's got a nice little bridge that I've made as well as having another little wall on the other side for uh, cars to go on the road. So yeah, so that's that's done and I feel very happy about that. So if we then move over to the right hand side of the board, uh, very much did the same thing, took one foot off the board. Now what this meant was if you've seen how I built the shuttle in the past, the shuttle basically is that first track that's closest to you in the main station area and that went off and went down uh, a hidden area uh, and basically went almost to the ed end of the f end of the layout where the fiddle yard would start what i've done is i have basically trimmed that down big time it's nowhere near as big as it used to be and i quite like it the way that it is so yeah, by doing that, I was able to then remove a foot off that piece of the layout as well, which also gives me that nice open scene on that side bit. So if you've watched the previous video, you will have known that there was talk about getting the chimney breast removed. We have completely scrapped that idea. Uh, our builder talked us into getting a log burner instead, which we're extremely happy about. 
I'm really happy about because that means that I don't have to destroy my layout uh, just to so that they can get to the chimney breast. With that in mind, I was able to then basically go right. Hobby Mojo is back big time because I didn't want to do loads of stuff on the layout as well as the heat. I didn't want to do loads of things in the lo in the loft and then have to then destroy it again. So full steam ahead, no pun intended. Uh, and what I did was I got some 15 inch hardboard pieces cut and I have made the back scene that goes all the way around the layout now. So it doesn't have the pictures that the central back scene has of the city sort of town scene on it, but it does have a similar blue and white cloud appearance to it. Basically the hardboard goes round and where the chimney breast is, I've got it to curve round uh, and it goes all the way then back to the back of the loft. What I've then done is filled in that space in between the edge of the layout and the wall so that I can build some nice scenic hills in that area. Very happy with how this has turned out simply because if I'd kept that additional foot at the front, it would have felt massive and I don't think I would have enjoyed doing the scenics on it. So I've now got that nice open part at the front where the tracks are quite close uh, and then at the back we've got the scenic bit as well. Once again, I've done the uh, scenic break on this section, so now effectively I have nice big pieces of hardboard that act as the scenic break so you don't necessarily see the trains going into the fiddle yard. Going back briefly to the shuttle system, previously you will have seen that I will have used my Hornby 121 bubble car in this section and my Backman Class 108 DMU and basically it came with chips in it already and what I've done is I've put those chips back in so that I can actually run it on the main layout meaning that I only have the bubble car to go on the shuttle system, which is fine because when it came to shortening the uh, sort of the tunnel that had the hidden area that went off towards South Sea East, uh, that meant that I didn't have to keep as much as I possibly needed to if I had the class one away. Also in the last month, I have touched up a lot of the ballast on the layout. Where I pulled up a lot of the track, there was a lot of ballast that had been scuffed and things like that. So. All around the two lane loop, that has all been touched up. There's still a few bits, it doesn't matter how much you think you've put enough glue down or you think you've put glue on a certain area, you sometimes just miss it. So I have now got it where I've put ballast down on a considerable, considerable amount of the layout. I've also ballasted the points, which I didn't think I was going to be able to do anytime soon, uh, mainly for fear, but I've done it. They all work, so I am very happy. On Instagram, I did a poll where I asked what people would want me to do next on the layout. Uh, the options were station area, third rail for the layout, the left side, so the old canal, or the right side, the heading off the island section. Uh, and the third rail and the station won by a country mile. Like, I think one of it was one of the highest voted polls that I've ever done on Instagram. And it was such a big win for the station and the third rail. The station won, but the third rail was so close that I've decided to do the two at the same time. The reason for that is because I have decided to pull out all of my old platforms and re- set them in because I'd put some of them in where a Mark 1 coach would scrape up against the side of it. And that's not good. You don't want that on your layout. So um, because they were only held down with PVA glue on some cork, it's easy to rip it all up. Um, and I'm just going to relay those in. With that in mind, I'm also potentially thinking about extending some of the platforms not for any reason other than the fact I think it will just look better. Um, the two platforms, or three platforms technically, are big enough that they can all accommodate at least four coaches, and then the platform one and two are big enough that they can accommodate six coaches and a train. So, what I want to do is basically make it so that if I really 
wanted to, well, they won't fit in the fiddle yard, but if I really wanted to, I could have eight coach trains running around the layout. So I want to extend the platform on that back platform uh, further along, which that's fine. There's no problem there because there's nothing that's going to be getting in the way. Um, with platform two and three, I'm going to be extending it on the left hand side of it as it goes around that curve. Um, the chances are that, that will probably only make space for an extra coach, but it doesn't need to. As, as I've said before, I can only fit five coach trains and a loco in the fiddle yard. So the chance of me running bigger trains isn't going to be something that happens that often, but it's something that will be there. So I can do it if I decide to one day. So I mentioned that the station was going to be done at the same time as the third rail. Uh, I have purchased some of the Pico third rail kits and I have been working hard at getting that done. It is a strangely therapeutic thing to do, but it's also backbreaking because you're leaning over the layout and obviously it's on the furthest point away from me where it's on the two outside loops. So. When I got to the main station bit, my back was hurting a lot. So I've done half of the main loop going on the outside. That's been done with two of each kit. So that's the Code 60 rail packs and the rail joiners, the third rail insulators that you can buy from Pico. So that's two packs of each. Uh, yeah, I painted it before putting the rails in. And whilst some of them have survived, I don't know if it's the plastic that's used or the fact that I didn't use enough primer, I'm not entirely sure, but it comes off very easily. So there's some of the chairs where the paint on all the edges that you're touching as you're trying to thread it through, it's come off. I think that's more of a me problem. I probably should have washed it in soapy water before painting it, but that's not an issue. So I've done half of the main loop on the layout. It basically goes from the left-hand side all the way up to the center of the station area. Another three packs I think I'm gonna need, um, simply two to finish the two loops, uh, and then an additional pack to work on the yard and stuff like that. I'm tempted to put a, um, I'm tempted to put a third rail pack on the branch line, but I don't know if I will. Let me know down below if you think that's something that I should do. In the last video, I would have told you that I was having problems with my Royal Mail coaches after I upgraded the wheels on them. I looked and looked at what was wrong with this and couldn't figure it out. So I have put the old Hornby plastic wheels back on there and have had no problems with the coaches running. So, I mean, you hear a lot of people saying that you should upgrade your wheels to metal wheels. And that's great but evidently those old plastic wheels work absolutely fine whereas the metal wheels don't so i'm going to have a look at putting those wheels on something else i'm going to also check the um i'm going to check the gauge on them and make sure that they're the right size i used i used a gauge checker on them the one by dcc concepts i don't know if i used it properly in the sense that i don't know if it's meant to be really really tight on there or not so i'm going to check those wheels over however the raw mail set now has the old plastic wheels on there and it's running perfectly again, so I am happy. In the coming month, uh, the thing that I'm going to be doing is finishing off the third rail around the layout and working on the station. In front of me here, I have all of the platform bits that I have pulled up. They are in varying states of disarray. What I'm going to do is I'm going to soak them all in water and get all of the sticker that was on there off, uh, all of the ballast and things like that. I'm then going to get some of the brick card sheets that you can get. I'm going to paint those up and I'm going to stick them on there so that they have a sort of texture to them. When I sprayed the sleeper grime spray back in January, um, it did a fantastic job of weathering the track so that there was already a lot of weathering on there and I didn't need to do much to it. But me being sh stupid me, I didn't cover the platform stickers and let's see if you can see this. Uh, and with it, I got that much sleeper grime on there, which is probably about right, the type of grime that I need on there. But I'm going to put some texture on there. The thing I find is for some reason, the brick that's used in Portsmouth is more of a dark brown black brick rather than the sort of stone 
the sort of the grey stone or the red brick that you see in a lot of building kits. So what I'm going to do is basically paint the bricks up in that colour that I see a lot of in the area in hopes that it does a much better job of looking like Portsmouth. So as I said, getting the rest of the third rail done, getting the station built is my next big project. Uh, I am going to look at ways of making the platforms better for me uh, and ways of trying to get it so that it does exactly what I need it to do. Uh, I'm also going to be weathering the track over the next month or so with that third rail going in. It looks so nice on there. It was some. It was a piece of kit that I... I'm having real problems with my camera not focusing today. Um, it was a weird kit in the sense that I was never that fussed about it. Uh, but then when I got my EMU, I was like, well, I'm going to need third rail. So had a look into it and decided to add a third rail to the layout. And I tell you what, for such a small kit in what it's actually for, it makes it look so much better and I can't wait to weather it. So when I get a big chunk of time, I'm gonna go up into the loft and I'm gonna uh, mask up and I'm gonna spray all of the tracks with some sleeper grime. I'm gonna try and do this before I put the station in properly because it means I'll be able to get to the rails a lot easier. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll reballast the rails where needed and I can just sort of do a little bit of grime on there as needed. As this is the October update, and this is coming out very late in October, um, you could get a November update very early, you could get one very late, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. I have recently signed up to Kofi, or Kofi, or Coffee, depending who you speak to, um, which is basically a donation per month or a one-off donation thing that you can use for the price of a cup of coffee. So if you enjoy what I do, and you want to keep supporting me, you can donate on this. You do not have to do this, but it's something that is there if you so wish. I have also recently opened up the Emperor's Path Facebook group. Uh, it's a small number of us in there at the moment, but if you want to come and share your hobby stuff, you're more than welcome. It doesn't have to be just trains. It doesn't have to be just Warhammer. It can be anything that you want. Whatever your hobby is, you are more than welcome to share it. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you haven't already, please make sure that you subscribe and click the little bell icon. And also, if you have anything to say or anything that you want to uh, advise me on what to do next on the layout, please leave a comment down below. Other than that, my name's SBJ, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye!